Singapore is a small island state located in the equatorial region. The Arctic is a polar region located at the northernmost part of the Earth, which lies above 66 degrees north. This includes the following areas. Singaporeans might think that what happens in the Arctic stays in the Arctic since it is located so far away from us. However, that is not the case. We will see why and how changes in the Arctic influences other parts of the world. The Arctic contains land and sea ice. Rising temperatures fueled by increase in greenhouse gases is the main reason for the melting of ice in the Arctic. Greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide and methane keep the heat from the sun in, rather than reflecting them back into space. This causes temperatures to rise. Rising temperatures melts both land and sea ice in the Arctic. The melting of land ice contributes to sea level rise. Rising temperatures also cause thermal expansion of water, also resulting in sea level rise. Mass loss of the Greenland ice sheet has accelerated since 1992. It has increased from 34 gigatons per year, equivalent to 13.6 million Olympic swimming pools, over 1992 to 2001, to 215 gigatons per year, equivalent to 86 million Olympic swimming pools, over the period 2002 to 2011. The Greenland ice sheet alone has enough frozen water to raise global mean sea level by 6 meters. Furthermore, the amount of sea level rise is not equal. Equatorial and tropical regions are more adversely affected. Ice sheets' large mass allow them to attract ocean waters towards them, raising surrounding sea level. When an ice sheet melts, its gravitational attraction decreases and sea level around it can go down. Conversely, regions far from a melting ice sheet will see a rise in sea level due to this change. When the Greenland ice sheet melts, areas furthest away in the equatorial regions have the greatest impact. Sea level in the Straits of Singapore has been rising. Between 1975 to 2009, sea level in the Straits rose at an average rate of 1.5 mm each year. There is an increasing trend in sea level rising rates here. According to worst possible projections, we could see a 6 metre rise by the year 2500. Much of our nation lies only 15 metres above the mean sea level, with about 30% of our island being less than 5 metres above the mean sea level. Hence, proving Singapore's vulnerability towards sea level rise. Our current efforts to defend our coastal areas from erosion include the construction of walls and stone embankments covering 70 to 80% of Singapore's coastline. To cater for long-term sea level rise, the minimum land reclamation level in Singapore was raised from 3 to 4 metres above the mean sea level in 2011. In fact, in the 2019 fiscal budget, Minister of Finance Heng Swee Keat has announced to increase the budget towards increasing the resilience of our infrastructure to climate change and sea level rise. He said, Climate change and sea level rise threaten our very existence. As a low-lying nation, there is nowhere to hide when sea level rises. In Asia, 74,000 square kilometres of area near coast in Indonesia, China, Vietnam and other countries would risk permanent inundation by a 1 metre sea level rise. A 3 metre rise would enlarge the inundated area to 178,000 square kilometres, which is the size 250 times of Singapore. Even more sobering is the potential impact on communities. Asia has the highest number of people living in low elevation coastal zones, which makes it even more susceptible to the threat of sea level rise. At current rates, it is projected that 213 million people in Asia will be living in flood susceptible areas by 2030. In 2060, the amount rises to 310 million people. The hardest hit areas will be China, India, Bangladesh, Vietnam and Indonesia. While Singapore has resources to deal with climate change, the largest impacts are still on poorer communities. Other than sea level rise, we will also face more intense weather patterns. The temperatures in the Arctic influences jet streams in the upper atmosphere, which affects the weather in other regions. This brings extreme weather events such as increased rainfall and also droughts to areas in parts of Asia. Singapore relies 90% of its food supply on imports. Extreme weather conditions reduces food yield and may cause food shortages or increase in food prices. In poorer communities, this effect is worsened if the government does not practice food stockpiling. Temperatures in Singapore rose at an average rate of 0.25 degrees Celsius per decade from 1948 to 2016. The rate is projected to increase by 1.4 to 4.6 degrees Celsius by the next century. We will hence expect warmer temperatures in years to come. 
The influx of fresh water into the ocean and rising ocean temperatures also affect the global ocean conveyor belt system, where the ocean circulation drives currents and movement of heat. The melting of Arctic ice inputs fresh water into the oceans, affecting salinity and temperature, hence slowing down the ocean circulation. This ultimately affects nutrient circulation within the waters, causing changes in our marine ecosystems. The melting of Arctic ice can also affect Singapore's status as a regional shipping hub through the development of new shipping routes. The opening of the Northern Sea Route shaves 30% of travel time compared to traditional routes. Professor Tommy Cole spoke, We are one of the largest ports in the world, and development in the Northern Route could impact the status and prosperity of our port. Contrary to popular belief, what happens in the Arctic does not just stay in the Arctic. Singapore as a small island state is especially vulnerable to the effects of climate change. Many countries are committed to reduce the impact of climate change. Their participation in the Paris Agreement speaks volume on the severity of this issue. In the Paris Agreement, countries pledge towards a low carbon emission future, keeping temperatures rising at not more than 2 degrees Celsius. Above these rates, we would see severe negative impacts, such as ice sheet collapse, mass extinctions, coral reef bleaching, wildfires, and climate-induced migration. Furthermore, ice is more effective than the ocean in reflecting heat away from the Earth. The loss of ice means more heat is absorbed, and this is what scientists term as loss of albedo. Also, melting of permafrost in the Arctic would also release more greenhouse gases that are trapped in the ice into our atmosphere. These two examples are termed positive feedback loops. This causes global warming to accelerate and consequently results in further increase in rates of sea level rise. This certainly adds gravity to the current situation. Climate change is a fact. We need to change our consumption habits, choose a more carbon-friendly lifestyle in order to tackle the roots of climate change. It is not too late to make a change. In the words of a scientist, climate-related sea level rise can impact the very existence of Singapore as a country. If we continue with business-as-usual lifestyles, Singapore could become the next Atlantis.